So you're updating or restoring your iPhone 11 and you're running into error negative one. In this video, I'm going to show you what that problem is and how to solve it. My name is Aaron with iBoard Repair. Hi, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair and uh, this is the iPhone in question. iPhone 11 seems to be an issue specifically with the iPhone 11. The motherboard looks normal. The phone looks undamaged. We'll go ahead and take the board out of the housing and I can show you what this problem is. Okay, I have the board out of the housing. And typically this problem, the error one or error negative one, um, is usually broken pads along the interposer here. You can't see any, which is really good. Um, this, that means that this is probably not very broken and it should be pretty fixable. So I'll have to split these board and check the pads um, specifically just in case some of the pads are broken and they won't reconnect with the reflow. It's always best just to actually physically look. Um, otherwise, you might deal with a warranty. So let's get the hot plate and do that. So the board will go into the, the hot plate here. I set these to about 200 degrees, a little bit less actually. And I'll let that sit for three or four minutes and then I'll, I'll separate this board. So I'll be back once this is, once this is hot. Okay, it's, it's almost been three minutes. Let's see if this is ready to come up or not. And yeah, came right up. Okay, so the board split, let's look at it. You definitely have some ripped pads. Only in one area. So let me identify what those pads are and uh, see if uh, see if the problem makes sense for that. Okay, so let's see. Uh, these are Wi-Fi lines. These are I2C lines, and this was a 1.8 line. Um, oh, I didn't even know this this one. This one might be important too. It might be ground. I have to double check. But a few pads to fix and uh, this should fix the problem. I'm not sure specifically which line is responsible for the error negative one. It has something to do with uh, like a rose IC. I can't even remember the specific name of the IC. Um, but it could be either the I2C lines or the 1.8 line or, or uh, who knows? Any, anyways, most of these lines are going to be causing some sort of a problem, so we're just going to fix all of them. Uh, once the lines are fixed, I, I completely expect the error negative one to go away. So we'll get started with that. Okay, I was just uh, brushing away the flux, and while brushing it away, um, a coil fell off too, so that's going to need to be replaced too. So I mean, it was already loose, so I'm glad it came off so we can just take care of it now. So step one, scratch away these pads, apply solder to the pads, and then apply you know, something to make a new pad out of. There's those, uh, whatever they're called, I don't know, there's like specific little things that they sell that you can use, or you can just use the spacers from other iPhones. Um, I'm just gonna use the spacers just because that's all I have here. But there are specific things you can buy for this. I think I'm going to go ahead and fast forward uh, through this whole section. I'll show it, but I'll fast forward, so I'm going to stop talking. Okay, all the pads are scratched, so I 
and expose, so I'll apply solder to each of those, what, like seven points. Also, the reason I didn't scratch these ones is because it's just ground and they're not actually needed. So all the solder is applied, so all the solder is applied, um, I will start putting spacers on all of these. There, so that fixed one pad and that's basically the process for all of them. Just put a spacer on top of it, touch it with some solder for the iron to heat it up. And uh, I'll do the same thing for all of these pads. Okay, all the pads are fixed now. They went on there pretty nicely. So it shouldn't be a problem for, for this thing to work again. Now I just need to figure out the value of that coil and replace it. First I need to prepare the pads on it because those aren't pads anymore, they're broken bottom bits of the coil. These two components are actually on the same line, so it's okay if there's like some solder bridge between them. So I'll find the coil now that I can put here, and then this should be done. Okay, I found a donor that I can use. Thank you. 
Okay, the last thing I'll have to do before putting the board back together is fixing the pads on the bottom half side now. Last ones are just ground. I'm just going to leave it just in case my hand slips or something and I ruin the other pads. So now I'm going to just try to put this back together. The pads are still intact, so I'm going to just hope that the heating platform along with uh, some like supplemental hot air will be enough to put these back together. So same thing as before, just keep this board up and let it go back together. I will use the scope to align it, I guess. Mm, it looks pretty well aligned. Should be fine. So I'll just heat it up for about three minutes and then I'll, I'll blast it with some hot air and uh, be right back to show you that. So it's been a little bit over two minutes and I don't think I'm gonna have to do this one for a full three minutes. So I'm just gonna switch nozzles and give it some heat now. I only like to give it about maybe 220 when I'm just like kind of assisting the platform. And that's probably already enough. So I'll just let it cool now. Okay, so it looks like it's finished. Um, it's cooled. Let's examine it. It's pretty close. I may need to heat it again and put a weight on it, but it may be okay. I think it's okay, actually. Just right here is the farthest part, but I can still see the connections. I think it's fine. Let's try to uh, update it or restore it. It doesn't matter in this case and um, see if it works. So I'll go ahead and plug in the phone now and uh, attempt the update. I think I'll do an update first. So it found it in recovery mode, which is to be expected because it's already failed an update. I won't use 3U tools, I'll use iTunes, so normal users know what to expect. So 
So it's going to start the process. I will um, come back once it's finished. So it actually gave us error 75, and that's because I attempted an update when it's already failed a restore with this with this problem. Um, it won't pass an update now. It needs a restore uh, regardless. So I'm going to do that instead. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, reset this phone by pressing volume up, volume down, and power button. And I'll just keep holding the power button until it goes back into recovery. It'll turn off and then go back into recovery mode. It looks like uh, iTunes may have frozen, so I'll have to restart it as well. Okay, so now it's going to restore and it should work this time, so I'll be back with that. Okay, we missed the moment where it said restore complete, but uh, yeah, it restored. It's good. Um, to clarify about the restore versus the... Um, the restore versus the update, um, the, the update gave error 75. Let me change the camera. So the update gave error 75 um, just because it had already been restored previously as a diagnostic step by the customer. Um, if he never tried to do a restore to this phone, then it would have passed the update and uh, we could have done data, rec data recovery if he would have liked and pictures would have been available to take. Um, and that's just kind of like important to kind of think about because sometimes as technicians we see error 75 and we think that's a corrupted NAND chip and it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, if the phone was restored with this particular type of board problem, then it seems like it kind of corrupts the data. So if you try and update later on, it can no longer pass that update because of that previous restore attempt. Um, so it's kind of something to think about. Error 75 can possibly be error negative one in disguise. But anyways, thanks for watching the video. Um, hope you learned something and hope you enjoyed it and have a good one. Bye.